Ladies, gentlemen, I bid you all good night. Mr. President, Your Eminence, Duchess, you have the same rooms as usual. You, Monsieur de Richet, will find your room at the end of the corridor. Well, my friends, I am bone tired. I am off to my bed. See you in the morning. Good night, sir. I shall do likewise. Louis, I shall see you in the morning. Sleep well. Good night. See you tomorrow. Oh, man. It's been quite a day. Right. So what shall I do with this letter? It might be about my mother's disappearance. But if I open it, I'll be betraying Piaggi's trust. What should I do? Damn. Can't wait to open it, but I gave my word to Piaggi, so... Too bad. I'll wait until I hand it to Mother. Your turn? The servants are not very efficient. Durache can't be far away. They'll find her soon. Their search time is restricted given that they must keep an eye on Adams. I can take care of her, you know. Yes. Well, in any case, I do thank you for bringing her to the island. From what I've understood, the search of Durache's room hasn't turned up any results. Not yet, no. But we've put her son in there. Perhaps he'll find something. Hmm. That might come in handy. Louis grows impatient at not yet having met the famous Lord Mortimer. He will meet him tomorrow. Oh, what a pity to lose a knight at the start of the game. Are you waiting for someone? A young French soldier. During our game of chess? Don't worry, Gregory. The game won't disappear. I'll have one of my men escort you back. Don't trouble yourself. I know my way out. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. Please forgive me for this late hour. It is never too late. And we have much to discuss. One last move? Don't worry. Our games always seem to end like this. Or always start like this. Come, come. Take a seat, my friend. Nighttime stroll, Mr. President? There's nothing like it for a good night's sleep. Do not hesitate to ask a servant to show you back. The corridors seem quite safe. Peppermint, lime flower, and valerian. My miracle remedy when one can't get to sleep. A very good night to you, Mr. President. Thank you. And to you too, sir. I'm coming. Excuse me, am I bothering you? No, not in the least. Is something wrong? I'm going to need your help. Do you remember the young lady we spoke of in the hall? Elizabeth Adams. Home introduced her to us. Yes. 
Well, she is the daughter of my friend, the Vice President, John Adams. But she is supposed to be dead. Yeah, that's bizarre. Fair enough. Good heavens! I was present at her funeral. It is disturbing indeed. Yes. I need to make sure it's her. That's where you come in. I want you to distract Elizabeth while I search her room. And perhaps get my hands on some important information. At least, I hope so. Elizabeth is in the small salon. If you hurry, you can still catch her. I just need ten minutes. But if my vision is true, there are two men nearby discussing very important issues, and one of them looks much like Mortimer. Washington is very kind, but I came to this island for my mother, not for his ghost stories. Sir, I, I don't feel well. I'm going to have to decline. I see. Well, I hope you won't be needing my help one day. I must act swiftly. I'll search my room later. Tell me, my good man. Sir? Listen, I'm an insomniac and Sir Holm told me that you could go to the kitchen and make me a cup of herbal tea. And what is in this herbal tea, sir? Holm gave Washington a recipe for a sleeping drought. What was it again? Peppermint, lime flower, and valerian. I, yes, it's herbal tea. I, I'll go and make it for you at once, sir. I'll wait for you in my room. Hmm, I need to find a place to watch undisturbed. My dearest son, I'm writing to implore you to act quickly. The situation is rapidly worsening here. Paoli continues to steer our motherland, Corsica, toward open warfare between France and England. His men are everywhere. We are obliged to go into hiding and are unable to remain in the same place for more than two days. I wouldn't be surprised if they targeted us soon. Make haste, my son. You hold our destiny in your hands. Your loving mother, Maria Letizia Bonaparte. Ah, this window opens onto the balcony. Okay, hmm, so that means the other room must be on my right. Sir, I understand your eagerness, but the pressure on my family complicates the task. Relax, my friend. Your relatives will soon be huh. safe. So what I saw in my vision really did happen. Well, I hope I haven't missed anything important. I thank you so much. Don't mention it. Now that's settled, let us speak about your support. Yes. You mentioned earlier some assistance from the Golden Order? Absolutely. I have concluded an agreement with their leader, Lady Sarah Faustine de Richet. Another case that Mother didn't tell me about. The funds from the Order will finance the building of a foundry in Tuscany. You will soon be able to count on a hundred or more cannons for your future campaigns. I... Uh, I was not expecting so much help from you. Uh, when can I meet this uh, de Richet? Well, unfortunately, something has cropped up. De Richet has disappeared. Disappeared? What, here? Yes, but the staff are redoubling efforts to find her, I assure you. So the agreement, is it on or off? It is on. Her right-hand man has just arrived here to help us find her. And it is none other than her son, Louis Maurras de Richet. I wager he will ensure his mother's commitments are met. Louis, not an easy name to live with in these times. Uh, of course. But from now on, you will deal with him. This man, it can only be Mortimer. Very well. I will seek him out. Ah! Merde. Better get away from here.
Louis? Emily? I can explain. Perhaps, but remain still. But, but first, you could perhaps remove the blade from my throat? You have ten seconds to explain your presence here. I'm not here for you. What are you doing in my room? First of all, let's keep calm. My being here is just a coincidence. Anyway, I seriously doubt what I'm doing in your room is really the question that interests you. Now is it? Clever boy. So answer the question that does interest me. What were you really doing on the balcony? Seeing the window open, I feared someone had entered your room. With what I'd heard next door, I had every reason to believe that your life was in danger. I am a grown woman, but how kind of you to worry about me. Now that I'm safe and sound, tell me more. Do these events concern me? Do they involve the Golden Order? I overheard a conversation between a French soldier and some other individual. And what were they talking about? It seems Mother is involved. Something about a military campaign? Apparently my mother validated an order of cannons to help this man. Really? Since when does the Order finance wars? As far as I know, since never. Did they give any details, a date, what they were for? Nothing at all. Did you know anything about this? No, but I won't forget. Thank you. All right, Louis, I might have overreacted a bit. Please do excuse me, but next time, please try knocking on my door. I'd be delighted to open it for you. Oh, well, I'll remember in that case. Good night, Emily. Good night, Louis. Your Eminence, what are you doing here? I wanted to speak to you about something important. Do you still have my letter on you? The one I gave you in the hall? Why do you ask? I have a name to add to it. Here it is. Thank you, my son. Ah, I see that it's still sealed. I was right to put my trust in you, Louise. Now give me one second, please. I can't imagine what would have happened if I hadn't added this name to the list. Please, be sure to give this letter to Sarah the moment you see her. You can count on it. Have a good night. <sighs> I'm exhausted. I better go to bed. I'll search my room tomorrow. If Mother stayed here right before me, you never know. And Mortimer had better show up. vision yesterday, I saw that Mother had this room before me. I'd better search the room. Who knows? Maybe she left me something behind. Oh, this bookcase is well stocked. Oh, this book has been put back the wrong way round. A Voyage Around the World the travel log of the explorer, Louis-Antoine de Bougainville. One of Mother's favorite books. What a coincidence. And I don't believe in coincidences. It's just too much. I don't know what's going on here, but if you felt threatened, I'll bet you'd leave a clue, wouldn't you, Mother? Found it. A faint sign of the order, barely visible. Mother, you undoubtedly must have hidden a clue in this book. Let's see if I can find anything else in this room. Come on, Louis, think! Think! Let's recap. My mother was in this room. I found a rare edition of her favorite book. She must have left something behind. She must have used the writing materials. What if she used lemon juice instead? An old trick used to hide messages. 
A message using invisible ink. I bet you use a limit to leave a message. Now, how do I reveal the message? Aha! It's working! The heat reveals the message. Let's see what my mother wrote. Where all eyes size you up, you must pass by the Gorgon. Gorgon was the name of Medusa in Greek mythology. On the other hand, where all eyes size you up, I don't get it. And judging by the number of paintings in the manor, could be anywhere. After that, she adds, beware hero. The beast always charges the best protected soldier. And that's its weakness. What is my mother trying to tell me? If you've gone to so much trouble, you must not have only found something important, but you must have also felt like you were in great danger. Now I'd better hurry and find that damn Medusa. Sir, dinner is served in the Red Salon. Typical. I'm not hungry. Please give my apologies to all the guests. Uh, Sir Holm requests your presence, sir. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to wait before going and looking for my Medusa. Tell him I'll be there in a minute. For God's sakes, what happened in here? August 24th, 1792. Elizabeth, I am driven to despair and doubt there is any point in writing to you. I'm not even sure you'll receive my letters. Father controls my correspondence more and more. I am certain he filters our exchanges. Thankfully, one of the chambermaids is able to help me get my letters to you. But they still remain unanswered. I often think about you and pray every day to be able to hold you tight. We have so much time to make up. I beg you, answer me, please. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. That horrible woman came again yesterday. She spent a long time speaking with Father. I didn't understand everything because they spoke in French, but I'm sure they were talking about you. My dear Elizabeth, I'm writing to inform you of some unfortunate news. We won't be able to meet as planned on the first Sunday of May. I've been told that you're no better, and unfortunately, your brothers and I are absolutely snowed under by the work required to govern this new country. Please excuse us. As soon as we can get free, even if it's just for a day, I promise we shall come and see you. Your loving father, John Adams. P.S. Don't hold it against your mother if she still isn't ready. Please don't judge her. I'm sure you'll be able to put all of this behind you one day. Excuse me, Monsieur de Richet. I really need to talk to you. Hello. You're Elizabeth Adams, aren't you? Yes. I regret that we haven't been properly introduced. If you don't mind me asking, what happened to your eye? I had a bad fall. Looks more like a punch to me. My eye's nothing. Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? My mother came here to do business with Lord Mortimer, but she seems to have gone missing, so I'm here to find her. I know your mother very well. Really? Yes. I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you? Oh, I wouldn't say nursed. No. I remember her stare, cold as ice. Her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. What do you mean? You can ask her when you see her. Huh. She's getting more and more agitated. And next you're gonna tell me my mother's also responsible for that scar on your head? My heart stopped twice during the operation. I lost my memory for six months. You obviously have no idea of the abuse your mother inflicted on me. Wait. There must be some kind of mistake. My only mistake was ever meeting your mother. 
She's able to describe every detail without hesitation or getting flustered. It's becoming difficult not to believe the poor girl. Look, I've... I've got to go. Wait. I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? You're right. I... I don't want this conversation to turn into an interrogation. You've suffered enough already. I... I respect your silence. Please excuse me. Well, thank you. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Haven't you got a sister? Yes. I'm sure she loves you with all her heart. She's the only one who cares about me. I would have put an end to it all by now if it weren't for her. Since you insist, I'll tell you how I met your mother. Thanks for trusting me. You see, before I was born, my mother often suffered from hallucinations and fits of anger. Soon people could barely recognize her. She became a completely different person. So my father spent an enormous amount of money paying for the best doctors, but none of them were able to cure her. The last resort was to call a priest. So, is that what your father did? No. He went to an expert in the occult. Ah, my mother. Her reputation already extended beyond our borders. My mother's fit stopped at my birth, and Sarah de Richet concluded that the evil had passed into me. Not only did it encourage her to stay, but she took the opportunity to advise my father to... separate me from the rest of my family. That's how I was declared stillborn. My fate was decided that very day. It would coincide with my mother's frequent trips to America. I had my first fit when I was three. That's when your mother began her experiments to rid me of the evil inside. I understand how you feel, but I know my mother. I'm sure she had her reasons, even if it seems difficult to believe. Everything she put me through was all for nothing. My whole life was ruined for nothing. So what brings you here then? My father used to know Sir Holm. He offered to introduce me to the world's leading authority in the occult. Lord Mortimer. He was my last hope. Until I found out he had also invited your mother. It's got to be a coincidence. I don't believe for a second she's come here for you. You can't change my mind about this, Louis. My days are numbered, and I know it. Dear friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Do I understand? Huh. Peru looks Please, totally out of place here. He's counting the ten sets of cutlery around each plate? The man is completely lost. Thank you again for the wine, your eminence. It is served every day at the king's table. I am delighted to hear it. 
Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> A Prussian-Britannic coalition is not good for France. The last time we fought against them, our you empire went up in it. smoke. Mm. <laughs> is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity, typically French. A Sauterne, isn't it? Absolutely! If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favorite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I've taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry, I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. <laughs> would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small effort into oh? the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. It's the first time I've ever seen her so moved. Just mention that orphanage broke right through Emily's hard shell. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. What do you think of Volner? Please, the Prussian know. king is his puppet. I find it hard to believe the king of Prussia is so weak. Be careful. Volner is as influential as he is dangerous. You seem to know each other well. We used to work together. I see. Oh, really now? Have you any information on this yes, Napoleon? What a story. Mortimer has arranged to keep his family out of the harmful reach of Corsican monarchists. Hmm. Interesting. And that's not all. Mortimer and my mother have apparently agreed to deliver cannons to this Bonaparte. What? Since when does the order of finance wars? Are you sure? Unfortunately, yes. And the fact you didn't know my mother made this agreement makes it even stranger. <laughs> Thank you, Louis. At least you have Thank taught you me Milan. something. And right he was too. Mm -hmm. My friend. Monsieur de Richet, it would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? Of course. <laughs> Show us your oh. well, have Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 louis d'or for 200 cannon. Surely such an amount will buy twice as many cannons. 
Don't try to pull a fast one on me. We're both young, but we are not naive. Please don't be offended. I just wanted to make sure you knew what you were talking about. And I am reassured. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? <laughs> The revolution was a good thing, but it gave birth to a monster. We must overthrow the new system in place. Ah, you are right. Monsieur de Richer, I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little gift. Hmm. Reflections on the revolution in France. Mr. Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture, and please know that I, too, am delighted to have met you. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer, and you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> the last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Washington is a very gifted speaker. <laughs> Leave him for five minutes with sworn enemies and he'll convince them to be friends for life. Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. <laughs>